All right, we are officially starting our meeting of the um, our subcommittee meeting for diversity and inclusion. And um, we are meeting remotely on Thursday, December 9th via Zoom pursuant to the chapter 20 acts of 2021. This meeting of the community survey planning subcommittee of the Westboro diversity and inclusion committee is being conducted um, via remote means in accordance with applicable law. Members of the public who wish to access this meeting could do so through Zoom using the link that is on the agenda, posted agenda. No person in attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but yeah, no in-person attendance is permitted, but every effort is being made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. And in the event that we're unable to do so, um, we will post on the Westboro TV website, uh, audio or video recording as soon as possible. All right, so here we go. Today we are meeting to talk about, uh, just to review any past discussions we've had um, and materials related to um, organizational assessment and community surveys. And then we're gonna discuss and kind of talk about a plan to draft a proposal to do a community survey. Um, and we'll talk about all the steps that that means. All right, um, so I sent you a lot of stuff in preparation for this meeting. Um, did you find that helpful, overwhelming, otherwise? Um, I, you know, I looked through it. Uh, it was a lot of, I think the, the questionnaires and the graphs and stuff were, were interesting to look at. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I thought it was. I think I, the questions, um, that was also really interesting to look at because I was expecting yeah. sort of, different questions and, you know, the questions that were asked. So, so yeah, I, I thought it was interesting. Okay, good, good. Yeah, I, I um, the strategic plan from Andover, I thought was really useful. Um, you know, I, I think I, I was just kind of wondering also, uh, as Sarah was saying, I was wondering where the, when those questions, that sort of Q and A, cause it sounded, it seemed like they were community um, questions that came to a committee before any of this sort of started. And so it was, that was just interesting, that context yeah. and then the strategic plan sort of side by side. It was kind of, um, I, I, I thought it sort of made the case. For, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It made the case for the strategic plan and then hopefully for them to go forward with that. Yeah, so I, what it looked like to me and maybe then I interpreted it incorrectly, but I thought that maybe the questions were the Q and A happened, you know, sort of simultaneously as they were implementing mm -hmm. or they were trying to implement. Yeah. Um, and I was kind of not really impressed by the Q and A, to be honest with you, because many of the answers were just, "Yep, that is the intention. Right. Yeah. This is the intention. This is what we're gonna do." And this is, and, but there wasn't, you know, much meat to it. Right. Um, and and I'm, I huge that just irks me, and that's what I don't want to happen. Um, with us, because I just feel like you spend so much resource, you know, you spend so many resources, you waste so much time in all of this. And then, you know, the actual implementation, um, you know, is what matters. And, you know, if you look at, there wasn't too much meat to what I, what I saw and that, and that, so then I actually wonder um, how the implementation is going and that that's actually yeah. more. Um, yes. Yeah. I'm, I am with you 100%. I think, so uh, uh, just to speak to exactly what you're saying, um, I do believe the Q&A was kind of in process of this whole community survey and, and focus groups. I think they kind of all happened mm -hmm. in the same timeline, but I don't know exactly what that timeline was or what order it was in. What I do know from talking to the woman who kind of oversaw this whole process in Andover is that she was pleased with the final report and the information gleaned from it and pleased with the strategic plan, which was developed out of the recommendations from that final report from the mm -hmm. survey. She was displeased with the process with these particular consultants. She said mm -hmm. the process was very challenging and she would not hire these particular people again. Mm -hmm. um, so that is a conversation for a later date about, you know, when we're doing RFPs and, and looking at different consultants. Um, 
but I'm in agreement with you. I thought the, the information gleaned from the focus groups and the surveys were super informative. The questions asked for the most part seemed in line with what we may want to have asked and the strategic plan like kind of made it concrete yeah. to put it into action. So I think what I would like, so here's what I see our charge being. We will not, as a as a um, committee, be involved in creating the RFP, and we won't be involved. Well, we don't. I don't know how much we'll be involved with, like interviewing prospective consultants um, or implementing any process that happens. But hopefully, we will be involved, and and we can recommend that we be a part of that process. But what what our charge right now is is to say to the select board with the support of the town manager, which we have, and I'll talk more about that in a minute, to say to the select board, here are all the reasons that we need to look at diversity, equity, and inclusion in our town, particularly in town services, town government, engagement in town government, the services from the different departments, because that's our you know, jurisdiction. Um, here's the reasons why, and, and I'll show you like all the demographic information that we have, um, all the stuff from the school surveys. There's a lot of information that says we need to be making some changes, but we don't know exactly what changes those need to be. And we need to hear from the people of this community. And here's what we wanna know from the people from the community. So I see our charge is to put a recommendation forth to the select board that says, we want to hire a consultant to help us find out from the community these things. And here's why. And so we don't need to like develop what is the scope from the, we, we don't need to do a whole scope. We just want to say, what are the outcomes that we're looking for to inform the work of this committee in the future and to inform the work of the town manager? So, I mean, I'm, guessing you understand this, but having been new to town government of just a few years ago, you know, the town manager and her office, the assistant town manager, oversees all the department heads and is in charge of the day-to-day -day operations of the town, whereas the select board is a much higher level oversight and doesn't do nitty gritty. So it would actually be the town manager's office who would probably put together the RFP that's, that would call for um, vendors to put in proposals. Here's how we're gonna help you answer the questions you're looking to answer. So what we're recommending to the board and to the town manager is what are we looking to answer and why is this important to do? The why has to be there because the select board needs to see this as a priority. Um, and then the select board will say to the town manager, okay, town manager, you put in this RFP. Actually the select board will say, okay, we'll put it on the warrant and the, the town meeting people will vote for it. And assuming it gets voted to be implemented, then the town manager's office, hopefully with consultation from us, will create an RFP that will be posted and then vendors will come in and say, here's how we think you, sh you could best achieve those outcomes. And they might say you do a community survey like Andover did. They might say you do focus groups like Andover did. I'm hoping they'll say, we're gonna go on foot to these different neighborhoods and community groups and do, you know, really pointed, like not just electronic surveys, but like get mm -hmm. surveys to people in all kinds of ways. Um, but we might not know the best way, but, but we'll put out an RFP for that. So that's sort of the vision of the whole process. And where I see our job is to come up with what do we want to see the outcomes of such a survey be. And we can put out like a, what we think a projected cost of this might be, but what I've learned about how the RFP process works is that you may think it's going to cost $30,000, but somebody may come in and say to achieve the outcomes that you're looking for, it's going to cost $40,000 or $60,000. And we, and we won't know that. And we can say that in our proposal to the select board, like we anticipate 30 to $50,000, but based on what the RFP responses go, it may vary from that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I just have a question just in terms of putting together this proposal to bring to the select board. Um, 
so we want to identify the outcomes <laughs> that we're hoping to get, but that's sort of tricky because like we need to, I think, I guess um, what I'm feeling like the priority to, in order to sort of make the case that this is a priority, I think that's the focus that we, because we don't know what the outcomes may be. Yeah, outcome, I, yeah. I think I mean? you're right. I think outcomes okay. is the wrong, maybe we need to identify the questions that we want answered. That's that's the yeah, that's a good way, to, way to say it. Yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I don't mean to be that. nitpicky. I just want to- like, No, please do. I think, we, I think the semantics are important. So okay. I appreciate your, your clarity on that. Um, yeah, because the, the outcome may be um, you're, you know, you need to hire X, Y, and Z, or you need to put these language, you know, programs in place. What, we don't know. That's that's the point of like asking. So I think, um, should we, so the questions that we want answered are. <laughs> like, well, I, think I, think that's, I think that's where, that's the work for us today. For us to conversation, do, yeah. Is to identify some questions informed by. Right. The survey results from the school racism right. survey they did last year, informed by, you know, the conversations we've been having throughout the year in our committee, informed by some of the demographic data that I've collected. I realized I thought I shared with you a document I hadn't, so I'll share that with you today. Um, originally, we were, I, I think I shared with you, we were <clears throat> thinking of doing like a large scale DEI audit within mm -hmm. the town. Mm -hmm. um, we are calling it an organizational assessment because we knew the word audit was a little scary sounding. Right. Um, but we decided that was a little bit more and, and we just weren't sure where to start. So we're like okay. eventually narrowing it down to, we want to hear from the people of Westboro first. And go okay, I was wondering how that kind of, I'm sorry, did I just cut you off? Sorry. No. Okay. I was wondering how that organizational sort of assessment and this sort of tied in together. So that makes sense. So that was really placed on hold. Is that right? Yes, it okay. was. It was kind of, so this is, this was from May. Yeah. This is the outline. Did I share this with you or did you I did. not? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I was, I feared that I had not. No, you did. Um, you so this was, me? this was like all the beginning conversations that we had starting last summer, summer of 2020 right. up until spring of 21. Um, we had a little subcommittee that met a few times to talk about this stuff. And this was sort of where we landed. Mm -hmm. At that time, our recommendations were twofold. Is that true or three? Twofold. They were to hire consultants to develop an organizational assessment, which would include all of these things, but look how gargantuan that is, right? And then hoping that we would get recommendations for incremental changes to DEI improvements and policies, procedures, practices, both internal and external and an action plan. So what we're looking, I mean, I guess I see, we're still looking for or sort of a similar out, if we're talking about outcomes, that's what we're mm -hmm. looking for. Um, but we aren't gonna decide what the scope is. Right. We're gonna look at, we're gonna write the RFP to say, this is what we're looking for ultimately by asking some of these pointed questions. We're going to look to you, the expert, to advise us what is the best way to do that. Yeah, that makes sense. And then let me see some of the other stuff. Um, I mean, Sarah, think... you and I offline talked about this a little bit before the meeting last month. Like, why why is this important at this time? So this is some of the stuff that I think we need to have in there for the select board because I falsely assumed when we proposed the Indigenous Peoples Day that the select board was more aligned with us and what they thought was a priority than, than I came to learn. Um, and so I think that where we could be really, the, the meat of our proposal can be in the why. <laughs> you know, Westboro has changed and this is how, and we have access to lots of demographic stuff. Um, I don't want to backtrack. I don't, I don't Go know. Go ahead. Please do. Can, but I kind of sort of missed the whole Indigenous Peoples Day um, thing. But for the final vote that happened, um, you know, or they must have had discussions online about, oops, sorry. Um, okay. about I just this. wanted to unshare. Yeah. So we can see each other. Um, can you tell me in a nutshell what the, yeah. what the reasoning was behind it or? Yeah. So. 
I'll, I'll actually just give you the quick timeline of it. Um, a community group came to us a year and a half ago saying we put together this petition advocating for Indigenous Peoples Day to replace Columbus Day. We're looking for the town to do this and we're looking for the school committee to do this. Um, that got put off, put off, put off, put off. We finally took it up and we consulted with a consultant from the Massachusetts Indigenous Indigenous Peoples Day Massachusetts group, which is a group of indigenous people advocating for municipalities to change their holidays across the state. And based on that consultant's recommendations, we recommended to the board, the select board to replace Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day across the board, explaining that it couldn't be a shared holiday because that sort of defeated the whole purpose of lifting up the experiences and history and honoring the indigenous people and and also acknowledging that Columbus is not a figure that we want to uphold in in honor any longer. Um, I was not part of the subcommittee, but I did author the proposal. Um, in hindsight, we could have probably done some things to, like more, we could have taken more time and done more processes to try to assess sort of the climate in the whole town's readiness. We based on that survey or that petition that had almost, almost, but not quite 300 signatures. We thought that that would be persuasive enough. We also knew that the school committee passed that change, that holiday change without a hitch. There wasn't even a discussion, it was just absolutely agreed upon. In fact, the original proposal was to create a shared holiday and one of the school committee members at the time, and I think this was in May of 2021, um, said, no, let's just replace it. And there was a, hardly any discussion and it just passed and that was that. Um, so we, I, and I think the rest of our committee at the time kind of assumed that there would be similar ease passing it through the select board. Um, and there wasn't. What happened is I, I gave the presentation and the presentation was here's why and here's we, we want you to replace it. And we want you to like, we know it will take some time to officially replace it in all of the documents and places that it needs to. So meanwhile, we want you to proclaim it. And then while it is being instituted, across the board, we'll do these educational sessions to make sure that the community is understanding the reasoning behind it. But what we should have done is do the educational sessions ahead of time and given more of a space for conversation before we made the recommendation. Because what ended up happening is after the school board passed the holiday, the people behind that petition were pretty happy because they were mostly parents, mostly looking for the change in the schools and, um, there wasn't a whole lot of engagement from that group in the conversation with the select board. We all falsely assumed the select board would kind of just pass it through. Um, but there was a lot of opposition from particularly Italian American members of the community who came forward to say that Columbus Day is a critical part of our history and taking away the holiday disregards our history and our history of persecution and, um, there were a lot of people from outside of Westboro who are experts on the topic who wrote in very long, very intellectual sounding um, arguments with lots of references um, as to why we should maintain the Columbus Day holiday. And that was very persuasive to the select board. Um, and the numbers of people who argued in opposition of the change far outweighed those who came forward at the time, you know, between the proposal and the decision. Um, and that is what influenced the vote. What was the vote? The vote was to... Well, no, I mean, what was the, was it unanimous? Like, what was the... It, oh, it was three to one. It was uh, three, so the, the vote was, do you support the recommendation of the Diversity and Inclusion Committee, which was to replace the holiday? And the vote, so it was, yes, we support it, or no, we don't support it. And there's three no's and two yeses. And uh, one of the three no's was a member, was Shelby Marshall, who's a member of the Diversity and Inclusion Committee, 
who obviously changed her mind during the process of hearing the feedback from the community members. Um, because at the time the committee made the recommendation to the select board, we were unanimous in our agreement that it was important to replace the holiday. I think the other thing, Kara, that I recall is that there were supposed to be, there was a proposal to have um, sort of listening sessions between when the proposal happened and when uh, it was taken to select board. And those were kind of put on hold and then determined not to be necessary from my understanding. Correct. Um, and so I think that a lot of um, the group, the community group was sort of waiting for those listening sessions to- um, Yes. To well, sort of, again, make make their case. Exactly. Um, so, exactly. so that was a disappointing thing that those, and I'm not suggesting- And it was surprising. It was really surprising. Yeah. Um, and, and the committee did not make it the recommendation for the listening session. And, yeah. Um, that was something the board came up with themselves, but we were in support of it. We thought, well, that, that's fine. I mean, we want you to make an informed decision if you feel like you want more information and an opportunity to talk directly to constituents, then, then please do. And, and, and Shelby, who of course is the liaison with the board, had told us all along that she expected that the board would have those listening sessions, though it may have gotten postponed till after the right. new year. And we were like, oh, that's too bad. but so be it, whenever it happens, it's good. And so when the vote ended up happening like it did with no consideration of those listening sessions, we are, there was a lot of surprise. I was surprised. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I mean, it probably would not be persuasive to, to cite that as one, <laughs> but, I, but, I, but, I, but I feel that it is because I feel like there are, um, you know, populations within town who are, whose voices are really not heard um, and, and, and not represented in the, yeah. if you look at the people who are um, in positions, whether elected or in, um, you know, working within the town government, um, I don't think that we have a very, we don't have a, a, a body that really represents the now pretty diverse population in Westboro. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is the biggest reason that we need to to do this to do this type of uh, assessment to say, mm -hmm. okay, so you know what needs to, where is the disconnect? Mm -hmm. You know, where is the disconnect? Is there is there just lack of interest? But there's usually a reason for lack of interest, mm -hmm. and that is usually that people do not feel welcome, or there are specific barriers in place, um, whether they're, you know you know this, <laughs> whether they're exactly. implicit or explicit, you all know this. Um, so I think those are the types of things that we really need to get to that um, be, you know, the, frankly, because we are a committee of the town, we really can't get there. <laughs> you, know I mean? like, you are exactly correct. Forward to, to bring those things to this, to mm -hmm. this committee because it's all part of the sort of town government, mm -hmm. so, you know. You uh, got so it. I also wonder though, was there no feedback that was given within the community? Like if Shelby was in the committee, mm -hmm. um, were we not getting the feedback that was needed, um, you know, like sort of off, even offline or, or to understand what was going on? Or it was just, I'm just trying to understand how we had somebody from the committee. Um, so during that time, I, I mean, I do not have a confident and full answer to that question, but there are some circumstances that I think play into it, which is that one of the sessions that was slated to happen during that period between the recommendation and the vote was one of the committee meetings was canceled because, or maybe we even decided not to schedule it. It was summer and everybody was on vacation and we couldn't get a quorum. Um, so I think time, just time without meeting happened. And, um, because of open meeting laws, there is limited communication that can happen between, amongst committee members between meetings. So right. I think that is part of it, but I don't think that fully is the whole answer. You know, I think that's just part of it. Okay. Um, to, I think you are sort of hinting at this, Donna. I think that part of our persuasion to the select board is indeed like we, we want the community voices. I mean, just as you wanted people to come out and voice their opinion mm -hmm. around the holiday uh, change, 
we're looking for even more participation, you know, and I, I don't know that we put this in our report, but just sort of in, in, in our overall thinking about it, they know, the select board knows that there was a limited representation of people who came forward mm -hmm. to express their opposition or, or to express their opinion, period, about the Indigenous Peoples Day holiday. They know that wasn't representative of the community as a whole. Um, and so I think that they will appreciate our sort of argument or, or just persuasion that we want to reach more people than we've been reaching. And we have been saying, I mean, it is quoted in our, our town's strategic plan. Mm -hmm. It is in the master plan. It is it's like all over these projects that we've done in the community. It says we want the engagement of more people and, and more representative engagement in Westboro, um, but we're not getting it. And we're not figuring out how to do it. And, and I know that there is, like Shelby doesn't have a great appetite for this individually. She has expressed in our most recent conversation about an organizational assessment or community survey. Um, she has expressed in a meeting on record that be between the master, the work of the master plan and the work of the strategic plan that, that we're already making strides towards in improved inclusion. Um, and putting those things in writing has been very important and I do not want to dismiss their value. Yeah. And <clears throat> all of those reports and recommendations were made prim primarily by the same people who are engaged in government already and primarily white people and primarily middle-class people and primarily educated people. And that's not representative of everyone and it doesn't include all voices. And all of that work was done exclusively in English and that is not representative of everyone in Westboro. So um, I think that while our, I, and I think, I, I actually think the positive thing is that there is an app, there is an interest in improving involvement, engagement, inclusion, having more, more diverse um, representation but we do not have the skills and the experience to do that well as an existing town government. We need someone who's an expert in this to come in and help us figure out how to do that. And we're not gonna figure out how to do that until we understand from the community what we're not doing and what we are doing that needs to be done differently. I would say there's also um, another strength is that the town is um, willing to change, right? Yeah. Like doing a, um, having a and also planning for what's next like though all these things are our strengths i think of our of our town um and there's still a gap in um who's represented and that to me that's just that is the reason for this and mm -hmm. um there's beyond that that i don't I, I i think you can't have a successful implementation of a five year or whatever a master plan or a strategic plan if you're not fully representing the community and you know from the results of the survey for the i mean i've, I've i'm more familiar with the um, public school you know the westboro yeah. public school survey um but you know we also had in our last meeting a presentation from the economic development group and uh, that was amazing. Like <laughs> there, that, that is, you know, 33% of businesses in Westboro are women owned. That's yeah. amazing. You yeah. know, I think it was about 15% are um, women and or my, you know, minority owned. Right. Um, and so uh, like, that's a huge constituency that needs to be yeah. representative and re represented at, um, you know, whatever boards there are that make decisions about businesses in town. I don't know if they are right. I don't know if those if those business owners are at those tables. Mm -hmm. um, Has so. there been any effort made by our committee to try and I know there was um, some talk about having an um, what did you guys call it an open session where people could come and ask. Um, maybe it was based around this. I'm like not recalling exactly what it was. Right? We had there was some conversation about having a an an open or invited or how does it, I don't know. Well, the, what I proposed at the last meeting, which would, would be new, will be new because we're going to do it is to have an open forum during, as an agenda item in every meeting, um, which we haven't had in the past. Now, what you all wouldn't, wouldn't know is that before the pandemic, um, 
this committee was super casual. <laughs> and when I was hired three plus years ago, the town manager, the assistant town manager at the time, who's now the town manager said, you know, Kara, I think that you would be really valuable adding your experience to this group. Would you come? And, and so I used to just go to the meetings and I wasn't a member. I was an appointed member. And there were like half a dozen people to a dozen people who would go to those meetings regularly and just talk with the committee. It was very informal. We just chat about all of these things. Unfortunately, the informality did not lend itself to action. <laughs> um, but it was, but what I liked about it was that it was much more conversational and there was a lot more sort of just thinking out loud, opinions shared, people felt comfortable to just bring in different ideas and thoughts and concerns from the community in a casual way. Um, and then we, went on hiatus for a long time because we couldn't get a quorum. We had a bunch of people drop out and we couldn't get a quorum forever. We actually hadn't met for like five months. Like I, I became, I got appointed to the committee in, at some point and then I became the chairperson because the chairperson resigned her position and asked me, resigned, le left the town and, and asked me to do it. And then we didn't meet for many months and it wasn't until George Floyd died, was killed, was murdered that, um, the community rose up and said what hap what's happening with the diversity and inclusion committee and the town administrators also said you know can we start this committee in again and i'm like sure we can we could have started at any time but your rules say we have to have so many people and we don't have those people and so that's when we they changed the makeup of the committee to include more community members and then uh so between july of 2020 and July of 2021, we had a super active, that's where a lot of this stuff came from, was a really active committee, but it was more formal because we were meeting almost exclusively on Zoom and um, it was a lot harder for the community members to come forward. And it just, we, we weren't having just the, the open conversations um, in the same way. We were having great conversations and, and important things I think were happening, but but we weren't getting just the organic like people off the street coming in and saying hey do you all know about this have you heard about this like what can we do about this and that's what i'm ho hoping we can institute again by having an open forum at every meeting and then doing some kind of um well then having an evening meeting once a quarter and then you know there might be other things that we do to invite public opinion more into our committee okay okay so but the thing has changed rules wise whereby it can't be casual again or where people can't feel um you know comfortable to come in and just and just speak their mind right i mean yeah we just have to we just have to institute it we just have to make it we have to make that cultural shift again yeah right right because i think that this type of a committee really really calls for that mm -hmm. um you know people i mean it's a diversity and inclusion committee i mean people <laughs> you know, have to be able to feel like they can come and say what they want to say. Otherwise we're never going to accomplish the goals that we're trying to, yeah. um, you know, so I was going to, that's basically what I was going to say was how yeah. come, you know, people can't just, because I think that that would also um, help to inform us and help us to inform them that, okay, when we have important issues that are coming up, like, you know, you guys need to show up and be there and speak up, um, you know, but a, we'll find out a lot more about what the issues are and then B, they, you know, they will feel like they have a voice and, 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 and the ability to, to, you know, um, project that. Yeah, I agree. I think so. Um, all right. Shifting back to the specific committee work for us. I think that what would be helpful for me. Okay. Sorry. One more thing I wanted to share about the committee and the process is that I don't think we need to have a formal proposal to the select board until January. Okay. Um, we don't need to have it this month. So we don't need to have it by Tuesday, which is the next time the select board meets or even by the next Tuesday meeting, but by mid to late January should be fine. So I think, but what we could bring between now and next Thursday to our committee is a draft of here are the questions we want answered by a community survey um, for the purposes of informing policies, procedures, hiring, whatever. And here is the why this is important. So those are the pieces that I think the three of us, I would like to see the three of us do before Thursday is come up with just that 
it doesn't have to be formal. It can just be a bulleted list of what are the questions we want answered? Why do we want them answered? Why is it important? Mm -hmm. Just outline, and then I'll put it in, you know, we'll, we'll get feedback from the committee and then I or I with assistance of anybody um, will write the proposal and at some point in January, we'll present it to the select board. So should we brainstorm some of those questions now? Let's do it. Okay. So the, the thing that keeps coming to my mind is um, what, what are the barriers um, that prevent people from participation in town government or from receiving town services? And are there specific barrier areas that you want to make sure we ask about? Language is probably a big one, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think also like the Andover results of their surveys and just sort of general comfort level with, uh -huh. you know, for example, going to uh, uh, um, questions around safety, <laughs> right, right, with like, you know, um, what are the, what has been your experience with the police, with fire, with, the, you know, w those types of town services, yeah. with, um, you know, the food pantry, all of those things that um, are here to, to support all of our, you know, all of our town. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we'll sorry, just a quick, a quick little um, side note, mm -hmm. our food pantry is not a town service, it's a private, um, private nonprofit, just okay. FYI. <laughs> I didn't know that, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's important to note. Yeah, yeah it is. Um, and, and so does that make, you know, I, I think those are the types of questions, right? Like just um, comfort level, but and um, with accessing those services. And what I mean by that is like, do people feel that they're going to be, um, they're, that they're going to get the services that they're they're in need of. That's I get. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It does. I think I I keep coming up in my head with a sense of welcome. Yeah. To feel welcome and invited. Mm -hmm. and, I think part, one of the words there should be participation. Mm -hmm. okay. um, that it kind of falls under that huge umbrella. We've got the basic needs, obviously, um, and and access to basic needs services, but also, you know, just being, um, like you said, feeling welcome or invited to participate um, in. Yeah, and I think with the participation question, I wanna know specifically what do you participate in and what do you not? Because even though in theory we have data, like we know how many people and who comes to town meeting, but do we really know the demographics of who votes? Do we really know uh, who walks into town hall to do whatever you do at town hall? Do we know who comes to youth and family services? Yes, we know, but mm -hmm. you know, does the town know that? No, mm -hmm. um, so. so. Right, just the hours of town meeting, for example, yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe prohibitive for working yeah. you know, people who work on weekends or people who have kids and need childcare or, you know, um, or need transportation services yeah. that are not available on the weekend. Yeah. Those are the types of questions that we don't, I don't think we have any answers to. Um, Another aspect would also be, I think, um, aside from, you know, um, demographic, well, wealth and all this, but I think that one of the um, things that would be interesting to figure out is, you know, how many of those participants, people who, um, feel welcome to participate, have their roots in Westboro, who are new to Westboro, mm -hmm. um, you know, and how welcome they feel uh, for different, you know, mm -hmm. things, that, you know, that, that plays a part into it too. Yeah, right. I like that. I like kind of thinking about what are the demographic or, I, or, or identity kind of pieces that we want to know so we can cross check it with the answers to the other questions. And I think that not only like race and ethnicity, but also how long have you been in Westboro? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to aid us in our questions, it might not be a bad idea um, to do some research in the backside to, for, from our side to figure out, okay, you know, I, I don't know how, you know, how exactly this would go, but, but to sort of identify um, town positions or town participants and sort of find out ourselves 
um, you know, the history of that participation, you know, am I, uh, because I, I believe this to be part of the inclusivity, um, you know, is it my dad's 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 dad who was always, you yeah. know, here. And so I'm by default here. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that that's that in this, in our town, I think that that's really key. I think that that I wouldn't even have thought of that, Sarah. And I think you're right because I can think of like three people off the top of my head who are fifth generation Westboro residents and they feel so empowered to be involved and engaged. Um, but I know people who've lived here 15 years and they still feel like newcomers, you know? So yeah. um, I think that's a really good point is the generational participation. Yeah, right. I think that, yeah, that's a great point. And it made me think about, I'm new, newish to town. Um, and just how, um, how do you navigate the services that are available? How do you even, how do people even know that they exist? Yeah. Um, as, as you, you know, as you come to this town, um, settle here, you know, I, like what, are, what are the, um, what are the ways in which those services are made, um, public, like made, uh, how do we make the public aware of those services? Did or, does that make sense? Yes, it does. Also, <laughs> another one I think that would be important is to identify whether people feel represented. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, I think that that's a really important one. That is. Now, do you want to elaborate on that question? Are there any sub questions to that, Sarah, that you're thinking? Because I think representation can mean so many things, right? So, you know, I always think on this very high level. So it's, it's always, you know, at, on, well, I mean, obviously people can speak to their, whether we're talking about, I'm talking about official positions and representation and um, influence or, well, that's the wrong word. Um, but whether it be town committee, power. positions of power, you just said it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that'd be elected officials, that'd be town department heads, that'd be people who have decision-making capacity, yeah. boards and committees, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, and, and that was one of the things that came out of the school survey too, was the yeah. need for hiring, you know. Yep, I saw that. Educators that, that reflect our, you know, the kids populate, you know, the kids, um, and because we're not there. Um, yeah. So representative too, in terms of, um, the people who are in, in front of the classroom. Yeah. So, yeah, because one of the things that I would like to see as part of the outcomes would be that, you know, we designate certain groups to have representation on the very high level. So, you know, you're reserving a seat for, you know, whether you want to call, whatever you want to call it, but we've got a certain amount of representation, um, coming out of, you know, the minority groups, um, or at least a percentage of the seats so that, the, you know, ultimately in my mind, that's the only way to get representation. So like just to cut to the chase, like that's the yeah. one outcome I want to see. Yeah. yeah. And not just in a way that you can count, count people in the, in, in a demographic pool, but that people have real decision-making power. Right. Cause I think about, um, I mean, if you look at just town employees in general, we, we are vast majority white. Um, although that is, that it has been changing in the last year, interestingly, just new hires, but but those are mostly hires on a lower level, but a little bit, you know, so there's one thing to be say, oh, look, our, you know, town employees are a quarter BIPOC, um, but are any of those people in decision, you know, positions of decision-making power? Well, it's interesting to also look at, so I was looking at the different committees and, um, you know, some of the committees are town appointed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you, for, for um, who's going to go on that committee. And then some of them, like, I think our committee is actually elections, right? I mean, not, uh, they're um, the it's, ours is town manager appointed. Some are select board appointed and some are elected. Okay. Three so, very different. Is there also a, a category that are uh, appointed by the moderator, the town moderator? Maybe. Yeah. I believe they're, they're, the town, um, the committee that's looking at the town seal. Oh, maybe, is that from the moderator? It might be. Maybe the moderator, maybe the board, I, I'm not, oh, it came, because it came out of town meeting, I believe that's why the moderator um, sort of manages it. Okay, 
Yeah. I mean, isn't that interesting though? I mean, yeah. how the appointments are yeah. and what um, positions are, are being filled and how they're being filled and how they're being appointed. I mean, elected positions, you know, we've got a whole nother issue about whether or not people are feeling represented, represented and, and the ability for access to vote for those positions um, is a whole separate category. But then, you know, what positions, you know, why is it that we've got the town manager appointing to our committee and then the select board is, is um, appointing. So I actually had put in an application for another committee and um, it's just interesting because that one is a select board. Yep. Yeah. It's point. very different. And like I, um, as youth and family service director, we have a youth commission, which is my advisory committee. Mm -hmm. um, and that's select board appointed, but the select board appoints according to the existing committees commission's recommendation and my recommendation so and I, if we're you know, going what's that yeah. well I thought you also had to have recommendation for this committee I didn't realize that I thought that you there we was did, a discussion. we did last year but it's really up to Christy as the town manager and she just opted because we only we didn't have the huge pool of applicants she opted to do the um Last year, because there was such a huge pool, she did not want to take that on by herself. And so she delegated the vetting to the committee. Uh, but, you know, if there's, for example, two openings on a committee, I mean, is the select board or the town manager's office given the, I mean, they, they clearly are, but they're, they're, are they able to just bypass an applicant that comes in and wait for more applicants to come in because I know that this committee had two. I know the committee I applied to has a couple and I'm curious to see the next select board appointment, whether or not um, it's gonna get filled. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a very good question. There, there, it's not, there, there's not a lot of um, rhyme or reason to it from what I gather. Well, I, I think it goes to your, so many of your points, Sarah, about sort of the, the, um, the long, the generational sort of influence um, in, you know, here in town and all, but also there's this piece of um, once you're in, you're in, <laughs> you know, and, um, and that, and so I, I'm, that, that, that may be something that should be part of an organizational assessment. You know, I'm sure it is, I'm sure it was part of your recommendations, just looking at like term limits or, you know, things like, you know, how yeah. many, how many um, committees can uh, a, a person serve? Those types of things so that you have the full. So that just says who is on our committees, I think is like, I think that part of the community survey, while we want to get people's answers to these questions, I think we also want to make sure we are just making sure we have all the data we need in one place. So data gathering as well. So like, yeah, I think that that's kind of committees. Right. Yeah. And, and actually that's a really good point you just brought up Donna, because um, I see that so often where we've got like all these duplicative, you've got people yeah. that are like in, you know, in, in places of influence and power. And then they're also sitting on all these subcommittees. So, you know, uh, how are you able to sort of get anything, it, it, you know, what, what is the point of that? And actually I think that there should be some initiative to limit that. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think it also spreads the work, right? Because <laughs> you know, you 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 want more, you know, people involved because there's just, you know, I, I think part of I, this is just opinion from from me, but I think people are intimidated by the amount of work maybe a committee includes, you know, or requires, and that may be because there's all these other subcommittees. I think if people had a better understanding of of the level of, uh, you know, com like time commitment. You know what I mean? Like, oh, totally. you know, to be honest with you as another personal, you know, this is an opinion for me. I mean, I've been involved in smaller schools and, you know, I've been on different committees and boards. And I think that the biggest deterrent for people is to not feel um, as if they, you know, that that time and that effort and all of that is going to actually be fruitful towards anything or that they're going to actually be able to make any sort of influence yeah. um, or change, make any change. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is the biggest deterrent. So, you know, like, again, I harp on the same thing, which, you know, people, people probably don't want to hear, which is that I feel like it has to happen from a top down 
um, sort of, you know, there has to be that approach where, you know, we're going to be doing all of this and we're kind of in the weeds and we're, we're doing all this, but if ultimately, you know, you're going to go through all that, you know, like even when it comes to the consultant, we're going to hire this consultant, we're going to come up with the recommendations, we're going to pay all this money through our nose, and then we're going to get to the top and be rejected potentially. Um, what is the point, point in that, you know, I, that's the fundamental issue I have. So. No, I think so right. to yeah. that point, I think that is a really, I think, I think now we're actually talking about what I was originally thinking about outcomes. Mm -hmm. So the questions were kind of, we, we've got a good list of questions going. And the reason we want answers to this questions is to um, be able to look at, we want out of this survey to come recommendations from the consultants for how do we make improvements to our policies and procedures around hiring, around committee appointment, about committee participation and representation, <clears throat> about just improvements to service access. We also want to come out of this uh, survey recommendations about how do we implement this? Like, how do we start to implement the recommendations that they're making? So um, yeah, what I think that we don't wanna just pay to just, someone share our survey results. We want somebody to give us recommendations about how do we interpret these results and implement change for change, you know. One comment I wanted to make too, and I think we need to differentiate is some of the results that we're seeing, um, you know, are coming out of the school system. And I feel as though, you know, we, it's, I, I'm hoping and I'm very optimistic that the town really wants changes. But, um, you know, when you put them as parallel organizations, I feel as though really the change that's happening is within the school, the school and through the school committee. Um, but I'm not sure that I've seen all that much change happening, like, you know, at, in town. And I think it's very easy for the town or for us to piggyback on what the schools are doing. Um, but that's not our reality um, is what is what I feel. So, yeah, agreed. And that seems to be the case in a lot of municipalities that the schools are ahead of the, the town government. Um, so I think it's, I'm glad the school is doing this work because I do think that there is a, an influential thing that happens. Like I, I do think the town was, does not want to be so far apart from the schools that it's glaring, you know? Um, but I agree, we can't just tag along. It has to be, intentional from the powers that be in town government. And maybe outcome wise, one of those initiatives should be to have more education coming from, um, you know, within the town. So we've got more participation. I see that, like, I don't know if every committee has um, that initiative to ensure that there's educators that are sitting on the committees, mm -hmm. um, you know, but maybe that should also be an initiative to try and bring them more. And I know that they're the ones I would say, Donna, who are I feel are more hesitant because of the amount of workload we're talking about. You know, they, they're underpaid, they're under, you know, they're doing what they have to do and that's it. They don't, you know, I don't blame them at all, right. but you know, their input and their feedback is so integral, Yeah. you know, and, and, and it's a huge reflection of what's actually, you know, where we should be headed, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. Absolutely. Um, there was something that you said that also, implied to me that what one of the recommendations we want to come out of this whole process is recommendations for training. <clears throat> now, now I believe that training is implied that if, we're, if we make changes to um, any of these structures and policies and procedures, there has to be training in order for that to stick. But I think we need to be explicit about it because um, one of the things in my own work around anti-racism, which I've been doing a ton of the last few years, um, you know, some of the key points that I always take away is that no amount of like anti-bias training does a lick of good unless there's overarching cultural shift, right? Unless there's Absolutely. commitment, commitment from the top. So you can put in, you know, and the same goes for policy. You can put in all these policies that look good on paper in an audit, but if we don't have, we, we, we don't have cultural change, then they won't actually make a difference. Like, for example, I was, I'm part of this DEI coalition of, of people, leaders doing this work in municipalities across the state, amazing group of people. I love them so much and I've learned so much from them, but they, we were talking about language access plans and how it doesn't do much good to have 
rule, like just have access to interpreters if someone still walks into an office is and treated is and is treated like an alien, even if there's an interpretation service, if there's not a, a, a skills and understanding and respect, you know, around cult, cross cultural or cross linguistic communication, then using an interpreter, yeah, like, what's the what's the point if there's right. not right so like there has to be a training component about the uh, throughout all of this, no matter what change is implemented, it has to include training around um, issues of D all issues around DEI, privilege, power, marginalization, oppression, all that stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think that there has to be buy-in, right? From because if you're trying to make organizational change and you're doing it in in a way, I love the idea of having you know set spots on committees assigned for you know different groups to yeah. make sure we have the appropriate representation, right? And that can also um, people can respond to that really defensively, right? The people who've been there can, <laughs> you know, not, the, the people, you know, if you've been there, you don't want to necessarily give up your spot. And that's something that I think, you know, really does require training, really does require, um, you know, from this is the mandate, like this is, yeah. this is what we're doing <laughs> for yeah. the reasons that benefit everyone. I think you're both saying from top down that um, change, change can be threatening that's yeah. that's the thing people can respond to it yeah. as in a, in a really defensive way yeah. and so i think what we need to do is talk about change can be really beneficial for all of us <laughs> you know because we all we all benefit from a community that's you know more inclusive and welcoming right i yeah. mean I, I would hope so yeah, and but the, you know Donna and Kara, the the thing is, right? It's such a chicken or the egg kind of situation yeah. because it's you know, on one hand, this is why I'm so not skeptical, but so nervous and fearful about this process because I feel like, you know, um, in order to make people understand, you have to educate them, but then on the other hand, to understand how they currently think, you have to educate yourselves, and you have to sort of go through this, but. You know, that's why I'm so much in favor of trying to maybe, you know, if there's anything that we can do that's concrete, it's what we do on this committee. And I feel like if we can open up this committee and do more as a committee yeah. um, to, you know, inform or sponsor or whatever it is that we have to do in town yeah. to try and, you know, make people come forward. Um, it's all in numbers, right? Or yeah. the yeah. relevant yeah. numbers, I should say. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, it, it's to um, motivate people mm -hmm. to, and I don't think it's just going to happen by going through this process. It'll be much slower. Whereas if we become more active as a committee, um, and then like, I love this idea of having, having open forum, like mm -hmm. if we can really push that mm -hmm. and, and encourage people to come out, mm -hmm. you know, I think that it's, that's probably the best, like, I keep thinking grassroots, you know? Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I totally agree. Um, I totally agree. And on that, so I'll use that as a segue to once we get this proposal kind of to the select board, we will need other things for our committee to look at. And so those thoughts, those ideas, Sarah, about like, what can be, we be doing as a committee next to really engage the community, demonstrate that we are action oriented, that we, you know, are listening, that we're here to make changes. Um, we need to be like, just thinking about that as a committee. And I think the open forum, we will automatically be inviting people to, you know, give us those ideas about what we should be doing. But if any ideas that you have about like concretely, what are some of the things that our committee could be doing? Please bring that to upcoming committee meetings because we well, we well, just for meetings. just for saving, um, just for in, in the essence of uh, like I what I don't understand is how come and maybe there is and I'm totally missing this, but I feel as though there's so much more opportunity for collaboration. Um, so you know, Kelly Petralia, I don't know if she's she heads which committee is it? Do you know she's um, a not a committee? She's the ED of Westboro Connects, which is a private nonprofit. Okay, so yeah. I mean, you know, how come we're not, or have we, and I'm totally missing this, so tell me if I'm out of line, you know, taking advantage of the fact that there's other community organizations that are trying to accomplish the same thing um, and sort of play upon that and do more collaborative, whether it's events or, you know, 
basically bring them in and have them yeah. be a speaker at one of our meetings, or yeah. if not a speaker, bring their people in, yeah. you know, so that we can sort of build the numbers, you know? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a little history behind that, that I won't get into today. Um, okay. Some, some, I mean, it's no, neither good nor bad. It's just like, yes, this is, this is something that has come to us before. And there's been effort. Um, I think one of the places that we have gotten stuck is about the limits of the scope of our jurisdiction, which is around town services, town personnel, town policies and procedures, and the limits of our jurisdiction around doing events and, and education and awareness raising. And it's been pretty clearly, that line has been drawn pretty clearly. Um, but that said, we are a forum through which a lot of information can be shared in the community and we shouldn't be working in silos. So even though we may not be able to technically plan the Martin Luther King event, for example, that Westboro Connects is planning or is, or is creating, um, we can advertise it like crazy. We can take information that from, you know, we can, we can have somebody from our committee being part of that event, listening to that event, bringing those issues back to the committee, making, yeah, creating a bridge of, of communication so that there's formal and informal communication happening all the time. Well, then maybe another initiative or outcome should be that we need to cut the red tape for ourselves. I oh, mean, good luck with that one. <laughs> I, know, but I mean, it, it's a giving, be, giving us that um, opportunity to bridge it, right? Yeah. I mean, it, otherwise, the mission well, is I mean, that, that is a very good point. I mean, I think in general, we're looking for recommendations as to what is, should be the charge of this committee. Like, yeah. does this committee need to change? Do we need to scrap it and start over? Do we need to just shift it a little bit? Do we need to broaden the mission? All of that. So I think that should be an outcome um, of this. All right, I do have to go. Okay. But I think that we got a lot of great conversation um, I got a lot of information here. I will type it up and share it with you. And will you please just add to it, tweak it, whatever may be. Um, I'll probably get that to you on Monday. Um, and then just give your feedback and we'll share what we have with the committee on Thursday. Okay, excellent. All right. Anything Thanks. else you want to add real fast before we go? No, great idea. Well, I just want to thank you because this is so like, I mean, I. I get really, really discouraged in this committee. Um, sometimes because, you know, red tape. <laughs> um, but it's these conversations and the enthusiasm of the other committee members that really keeps me enthusiastic and energized to do the work. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Of course. Thank you. I will see you on Thursday. All right. All right. Take care. Bye.